Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, playfastfootball.blogspot.com. All right, today I want to take a look at uh, New Mexico on offense and some of the things they've been doing with their uh, three-back uh, triple option stuff, which is more of a shotgun triple option, spread triple option, zone option type stuff. Uh, could consider it veer, depending on, obviously I'm not there, don't know uh, exactly how they teach it, but it is not your typical... Um, Navy, Georgia Tech, flex bone, triple option. It, it's done from uh, true shotgun depth, and it's done, in my opinion, with a little bit more uh, zone principles. But the, the thing to look at is they average over 350 yards a game, uh, and that right now is leading the NCAA in rushing, which is not surprising if you are a fan of the game of football or if you study the game of football or you look at the numbers uh, within the game of football, I think you'll find that every year there are option offenses that are at the top of uh, you know the NCAA rushing statistics, the issue usually with option offenses is they're also at the bottom of, of NCAA passing statistics. So they're not balanced enough to attack both on the ground and in the air. And you know there's a lot of reasons or theories for that because of the execution of the option stuff. Um, you have to work on it so much in the read game that the quarterback doesn't get a chance to work on that and uh, potentially work in the passing game. I think in the past, because of the pitch phase, there's been so much emphasis on the pitch phase part of the triple that maybe the quarterback doesn't get a chance to work um, as many passing mechanics. I think if you look at what New Mexico does on offense, I think it's just a variation of a lot of spread stuff incorporated with uh, zone football theories and schemes and then incorporated with a quarterback that can make certain throws. I think this offense can be... Uh, you know, can be effective throwing the ball. New Mexico will do some things to break out of uh, the traditional three-back stuff that they normally run. So I'm going to show you their three-back stuff, some wrinkles, and then how they break out of it, and then give you a little bit of an idea, at least in high school football, how you could possibly run this version of triple and still throw the ball. Okay, so for any of you that have uh, been watching for the, for the past three years on the videos I've been doing, uh, number one, I appreciate your support. Thank you. Uh, about 2,000 views away from a million. I never thought I'd be doing anything that would garner a million views on YouTube, but I'm very um, appreciative of the loyal followers that, that uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and that look at the blogs and then watch all the videos. But if you have been following, you'll, you'll know that earlier, about three years ago, I did a, a blog on three-back football. And when I was calling the offense uh, as the head coach and the offensive coordinator, I loved using three-back sets and the reason I did is because, for me, I don't use a lot of tight end sets. So when I would see stubborn teams that would either go man, man free, or, you know, 4-3, seven-man box as opposed to, uh, you know, a 4-2 box or a 3-4 box or, um, you know, a, a stack box with a 3-3 three, three look, you know, that 4-3, seven-in-the-box look gave us some issues with some numbers in our, in our not only our spread game, but in our two-back spread game when we were twins open. So I like using three back sets because it adds a helmet uh, to the equation when you don't use tight ends. Now, I would love to use tight ends. I haven't used one in a long time because at the high schools I've been at, I don't know if you can find consistently tight ends that can be effective. And it also puts a lot of stress on your offensive line coach to be able to teach uh, three-man surfaces and the different blocking schemes you want to incorporate with a three-man surface as opposed to a two-man surface. So... You know, that, that is just schematically an argument of, of where and how you want to do things. I'm not against tight ends. I don't use them because I think it was easier for me to teach the style of offense I wanted to play without a tight end, and I was at some schools where I didn't know if I could find a tight end every year. So, in, in speaking about that, the three-back stuff that I talked about earlier, uh, you know, two or three years ago, was stuff that we would use as short yardage, goal line, or teams that were just stubborn enough to, to play, you know, 4 3 zero, hard quarters, not respect, uh, a walked out number two, left a box that you really, numbers wise, had a hard time running to. So what I'm going to show you is, is my opinion of what New Mexico does and how they equate numbers and how they get uh, how they get numbers in their option game and then a few wrinkles off it and then how I think you can add some things to throw the ball effectively. So for any of you that have watched uh, New Mexico, you'll know that they are a shotgun spread uh, football team and they run a lot of triple options. So First set I've got drawn up here is their, their primary three-back set, which consists of two tailbacks and, and a sniffer or a fullback, which in essence is probably 
old wishbone football. It's just a matter of who the dive player is, who the pitch player is. Uh, the fullback sniffer is more of a blocker now than he is uh, a dive player in the old wishbone or if he was, uh, you know, the, uh, the fullback in a flexbone offense. So gen generically speaking or, or base setting wise, they come out in this three back set, all right? And, and what they're going to do is they're going to start off and they're going to be a zone football team, all right? And it could be zone or veer. It, it, it doesn't, to me, it's just a matter of how you teach it and, and what your rules are. But in theory, it's a lot of the same thing. Zone right, veer left to me, theoretically, are the same play. All right, so what they're going to do is if you were to start off right now and you were to say they're going to run, all right, uh, they're going to run zone to the right, okay? The five offensive linemen can account for five players on the defense, all right? In a 4-3 look with a seven-man box, we got to figure out how to account for the sixth and the seventh. So the three-back set's going to allow us to do that. So what New Mexico is going to do is they're going to start off with a zone theory, okay? which should be able to account for the one, the three, the five, the Sam, and the Mike, all right, to the front side of the play, okay? What they're going to do is they're going to run the zone with this back here, okay? They're going to take their fullback, and they're going to bring him across the formation and arc release him for that seventh player in the box. So what they're effectively going to do is they're going to read number six, block number seven, and then pitch off number eight, depending on where he comes from, all right? So what they'll do is they'll run zone inside, all right, with what I call a bluff track by the, the sniffer. So he's going to come at that defensive end. He's going to bluff that defensive end, and then he's going to go around and seal the first thing that shows on the perimeter. They're going to push crack with the receiver, so they're either going to push, stalk, or come in here and crack, depending on the structure of the defense. Okay, They're going to bring that third back around as the triple player now. So again, they are going to read number six, All right, and they are going to physically block number seven. All right, so if you look at the numbers, consider that defensive end six, that will linebacker seven. So by going to a three-back setting, what they've now done is they've given themselves the, the ability to read number six, block number seven, and then pitch off number eight wherever he comes from. All right, so if they were to crack the strong safety, then they're going to pitch off the corner. If the strong safety is a, if they're a cover two team and the corner is a force player, then they're going to block the corner and you'll end up pitching off the strong safety or the will whoever shows up first, but they have that, that fullback going around all right, is a guy that can seal the first thing that shows from inside out or the seventh player, whether it be the will, the strong safety. All right, to me, it's, it's irregardless who shows up. They have a player there to block them so that they don't have to pitch off two unblocked players, which to me is the key in option football. All right, so within their three-back set, they start off with simple zone theories. All right, zone it this way, bluff the fullback to block number seven, read off the sixth defender, all right, zone triple option, all right, on, on that side right there. If they were to get fancy, I don't see them doing it a lot, but you could add an access throw on the front side if they were to speed the tempo up, all right, to where if they got loaded boxes, one-on-one -on -one matchups, and they like the way their quarterback threw the ball, which they do have a quarterback they bring in that does throw the ball, they could also go up tempo and, and run a triple theory and run an access throw on the front side, okay? So that would be, to me, kind of combining the best of both worlds, up tempo, triple, you've got... All right, uh, enough helmets now. You've got five linemen and a sniffer. That makes six bodies to block six bodies, and you can read a seventh body, pitch off an eighth body. All right, so to me, that's the generic, all right, the generic style of football that, that New Mexico is playing, zone triple option using the fullback as an arc release player or a bluff player, okay? Now, off of that, what they'll also do, okay, is they'll run some straight lead ISO football, all right, which really in essence becomes to me a counter type play, but what they'll also do is they'll use seven blockers to block seven defenders, all right, so what they'll also do is they will go, they'll use that fullback now, that sniffer, and he will kick the defensive end, so they'll go zone one direction, Bring the fullback across to kick, all right, and then they'll take the other back up to lead, all right. So now what you've got is really a zone ISO type of theory, all right. But to me, it's really just counter football, all right, because you have a kick player and a rat player, all right. So the kick player is the fullback, the rat player is the other the other tailback or the second back, all right, that's in the backfield. So now there is no read, 
a lot of short yardage. I see, I see New Mexico do this in a lot of short yardage situations where they don't want read players. This end is on an island because he's been down block or zone block inside, beer release inside, and he's getting that bluff by that fullback or he's getting read by that quarterback, so he's on an island, so it makes it a little bit easier to kick him. If he's a wrong arm guy coming under the kick, then you just probably keep running option. All right, but because he's got to deal with all the different looks he's going to see in the triple game, all right, I think that'll slow him down a little bit. So when you come back and you run the kick lead play, which however you want to look at it, it's either a zone iso theory or to me it's counter football. It's got a kick blocker and a wrap blocker. But you've got seven bodies on seven bodies in the box. And that's what the three back set allows you to do. It allows you to get seven bodies on seven bodies in the box. And I think that's what you need to do, especially if you're so, uh, as run heavy as New Mexico is. If they get those loaded boxes, they don't throw the ball on the outside very much. All right, you get one-on-one -on -one matchups outside. They don't throw a ton of quick game. They throw some play action off the option looks, and then they're taking shots downfield, but there's no controlled passing game. When they bring the backup quarterback in, he throws it better, but there's still really no controlled passing game, and in my opinion, it's because they work so much on option football that they don't have the time or the confidence to work on some type of controlled passing game. Okay, so seven on seven, all right, that, that zone ISO, counter look, whatever you want to consider it, okay, um, not much counteraction in the backfield, but to me the blocking scheme is, is power counter where it's a kick and a wrap coming from somebody. It's just a matter of who the person kicking and wrapping is. Okay, so that theory gives you seven hats on seven hats, all right? Now, the next thing they'll do is they'll throw some eye candy at you and they'll give you some wrinkles with the same type football to where they'll go, all right, a lot of people like to look at it. They'll go with that old-fashioned Maryland stack eye look. Okay, so they'll get three backs behind the quarterback in the shotgun in the eye formation, all right? Stacked eye, Maryland eye, however you want to call it, define it. That look is just a wrinkle for them, all right? And what they're hoping is that the defense can't set the front, okay? They're hoping that the defense either can't set the front or can't, uh, you know, maybe determine where their games are or, or who's the quarterback player, who's the pitch player, because there's no sets to identify where the backs are. They can't really identify exactly where the zone is going to hit or where the triple part of it is going to hit, all right, because of the stacked eye look, which is very balanced and they can run both ways, all right? So if you were to look at it now this way, all right, and let's just say for argument's sake they're going to go zone, all right, to the left now. All right, they're going to go zone to the left. Now, what they'll do is they'll take the first back and they'll make him the zone read player. All right, so he'll actually run the zone read. The second back will arc release, and he will be the guy that basically essentially takes the sniffer's role as the bluff player going to block the seventh, all right, coming from inside the box or wherever he may come from. To me, you just block the, the, the first thing outside the box most dangerous, all right, whether it be a roll down safety or a, a, a scrape linebacker. All right, and then you take a third guy, and it becomes almost like freeze option to where this third guy will freeze for a minute, and then he'll back up and become the pitch player. And then you'll get a push, crack block there, and now they've got that same triple option theory out of the stack guy. They've got read the end, who's number six, block the Sam or the strong safety, who's number seven, with, the, with another fullback, all right, who just happens to be the middle guy in the stack, all right, and then pitch off number eight, all right, with a pitch player who happens to be the deep guy in the stack guy. All right, so same theory of football, triple option off a of zone or veer, still have a, a, a lead player, all right, to, to lead the option up. They're not loading that defensive end to make it a true pitch. They're still going to read that defensive end, but they will also bring a lead blocker out in front, all right, to where now they can handle that seventh guy wherever he's coming from inside the box or a drop down safety, and then they can pitch off number eight. A little bit of eye candy, a little wrinkle for them. They're playing the same football, all right, which to me is that's the key to how they can have so much success is they throw eye candy and wrinkles at you while running the same play. All right? Now, they will also, which this is the intriguing part to me as a spread football guy, all right, they will also start in two back sets, 20 personnel. Okay, so this gets kind of reminiscent of some of the things that to me, uh, Gus Malzahn used to do at Auburn and, and with the buck sweep stuff and always incorporate a motion guy as a third back. All right, but they start off in 20 personnel, okay, which is a little bit of a wrinkle for them. All right, and then all they're going to do is they are going to, and for argument's sake, when, when they do this now, they may get the boxes that they want, okay. 
or the looks that they want because of the set. I still think they see most of the same boxes all the time because even though they get in that set, they don't really throw the ball out of it. But when they get into this 20 personnel set, now all they're going to do is they're going to take a guy and motion him back into the backfield. Once they do that, they get right back into the same three-back set with some eye candy, a little bit of wrinkle, something that is different to the defense. Now that that back is back here, they can run everything they want to run. All right, so for argument's sake, that back could still be, okay, that back could still possibly be the zone player, all right, to where they could possibly go, all right, zone to the motion player, arc release the fullback to lead, bring this guy around for triple, push crack here, okay, and now you've got the same theory with motion built in from that slot player to give it a three back look. All right, so they'll go from that 20 personnel group right into three back just by motioning that slot back there. All right, so another wrinkle, eye candy, all right, more things that you have to look at, more things that you have to defend, all right, how you're going to treat that motion back into three, into three back, what does your defense do? Again, eye candy, wrinkles, things for you to look at while they still run their base series of plays, which they can run all of their base series. All we're talking about right now is, is the triple option part, and we talked a little bit about the zone ISO part, okay? So eye candy with a little bit of motion to get back to three back out of a two back set, which to me, all right, that as a spread football 20 personnel guy, that is something that, that creates another dimension when you add to the fact if you can throw out of your 20 personnel sets and then you can add, uh, you know, to me you can add some possible RPO second level stuff, nothing crazy but simple enough for the quarterback to handle. All right, now out of those 20 personnel sets you have – to me, the whole uh, gamut of what you'd like to run on offense, you can get into two back sets, and depending on the look that you're getting, you can go with simple second-level RPOs. You can go with zone RPOs. You can go with a power play in an RPO off an overhang defender. All right, Still option football. It's just a matter of whether you have the confidence in your quarterback to make second-level reads and the throws that he needs to make. In my opinion, I think those Division I quarterbacks that they're getting should be able to make simple throws on hitches, snags, sticks, whatever the routes are, if it's a simple second level RPO. All right, so to me, all right, what the element that's added now is when you go from three back to two back, all right, 20 personnel, now I think you can add in, all right, a very simplistic passing game that could be effective. Now, before I get into the passing game part, all right, the other thing they will do is they will run a lot of lead or load option, all right, or, you know, it's speed option with lead blockers. I don't, again, I haven't watched it enough. All right, I try to watch Mexico every chance I can get. I haven't watched it enough to know uh, exactly if they are a, a, a reach team on the front side, outside zone team, and then pitch off the first thing that shows, or if they are a down block veer team. All right, I'm going to show it as a down block speed option play because, in my opinion, in high school, if you want the ball to the perimeter, I think you down block it, make an end squeeze, pitch, and put it in your tailback's hands with two lead blockers, which is what they do. All right, so what they'll do out of that set, all right, is they'll get into this set right here, all right, and then they'll run, again, the terminology, depending on when you grew up or where you grew up, whether it's um, lead option, load option, everybody's got a different theory. The triple option guys know the terminology the best. I don't claim to be a triple option guy, all right, so to me, if you told me load option, I would think you were going to block the quarterback player. If you told me lead option, I would think that you're going to have a player leading up to block uh, the first perimeter defender or his first player inside the box, and then you can pitch off the next thing. All right, but triple option flex bone guys would be the best ones to go to to get that information uh, as far as lead load. This to me, all right, would be I would I would run uh, a veer concept to where I would handle the, the same five I handle in my inside zone game. All right, and then what I would do is I would push crack that. I would take this guy to arc release for the first thing that shows, sprint to the perimeter for the second thing that shows, back up, and let's go, all right, old-fashioned speed option off of a veer look, all right, let's go speed option off of a veer look, get that ball kicked to the perimeter with two lead blocks, all right, they do show that play, they run it a little bit, uh, last night in the game I watched, they ran it and actually pitched it into the back of the first lead blocker, it takes a lot of work, takes a lot of timing, uh, but it's definitely something you can do to get the ball to the edge, to lead blockers. For what I see in high school and what we do, I would tie it into the Vera inside zone scheme, all right, and I would 
hope that that five technique is a squeeze player off a down block, and I would hope that my quarterback gets the ball uh, kicked to my tailback rather quickly, and then I have my tailback out on the perimeter with two lead blockers. All right, actually becomes a kind of a version of a quick toss play in essence. If you know that end is a squeeze player on film, you know off the down block he squeezes, quarterback takes three steps, kicks it right now, the ball's on the perimeter, all right, which in a spread offense you want to get the ball, numbers, grass, angles, you got to find different ways to get the ball out there. So they will go with a little bit of lead or speed option, all right, terminology again, call it what you want, debate what you want. That's the play that they're running with two lead blockers and a double option look where the quarterback can either keep or give one pitch, not a triple option look. Okay, now, the intriguing thing to, for me, all right, is, again, because they show some 20 personnel looks, all right, because they show some 20 personnel looks, and for those of you that have watched, all right, any of the, any of the videos I've done in the past, I'm a huge 20 personnel guy. I think it's a great set. It's, it's probably my favorite formation in football. Gives you hard two-back runs, gives you zone read game, gives you... Uh, ISOs with a fullback gives you a lot of whams. If you watch Michigan-Iowa last night, you'll see that Iowa used that fullback to wham the one or the three technique a lot. Uh, so, you know, it gives you all those theories. It gives you RPOs, and it gives you three receivers on the perimeter if you can establish a quick passing game. All right, so to me, what I think would make this offense even more intriguing, all right, would be the ability to add... the ability to add tempo to it, all right, since you're only running a couple plays and you're only running those triple plays and you're trying to master them, add tempo to it, all right, uh, make it tougher on the defense physically and mentally, and then add some type of very simple passing game. And to me, what I would do, all right, is I would add, all right, I would try and have a quick passing game, okay. I would have three or four concepts out of a drop back passing game, all right, and to me, the easiest way to tie it in is to think about air rate principles. All right, so I would think about running Y stick. I would think about running, all right, snag or, uh, to me, it, it's a scat concept. It's a snag route by one, corner route by two, three in the flat. All right, so three-man snag, if you're familiar with Noma Zone stuff or, or, or you know, that, that terminology, it's snag, corner. It's actually could go all the way back to air raid and call it Y corner, and it would, it would be it's the same theory as why stick, except for now, instead of one being vert and two being on the stick, all right, one is running the snag, which becomes the stick, two is running the corner, all right, so two would run this route, one would run that route, and then three would be out in the flat. So now you have the same three-man combination that you would have in, in Y stick. So it's the same theory, just different guys doing it. So to me, I would have Y stick, I would have snag, okay, I would carry mesh, all right, I, all the games I watched yesterday, I saw the mesh play probably 50 times, uh, and, and especially in third and less than five, because it's a great man concept. You get rub routes, you get pick routes, you get a flat route, you get a number one that can win on a corner or an out concept. Uh, you see the success Washington State is having with Mike Leach and what he's doing. I think if you watch enough of it, again, I watched Michigan-Iowa last night, and I saw Michigan do it with Jake Butt at the tight end position. Uh, I see every offense I see carry some version of mesh in their short yardage package. So I would carry uh, quick game, Y stick, snag, mesh, and then your fourth one from there, all right, depending on what you want it to do, all right, you could go Y sail, Y cross, whatever you want it to do in your air rate principles. But I think you could get these things accomplished and then add very simple second level RPOs, all right, for your quarterback, which again, Think about it, you probably don't have enough time to do it is why that, you know, these guys get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to millions of dollars to do it, and they don't do it, so there's got to be a reason. So there's got to be, a, it's got to be a time constraint, a, a, a talent issue, or a mental capacity of what players can handle. But if you think about it, the second level RPO play is option football. So I don't know why triple option teams, if they could throw the ball, if, if, if all things considered, all right, you had a quarterback that could throw it, all right, and you felt like, your triple option game was simple enough that it could be mastered without uh, an overabundance of reps to where that's all you could do. To me, RPOs added into this theory would make the offense that much better because now it's still option football. You're still telling your quarterback to stick a ball in somewhere and ride, 
But when he pulls it now, you're asking him to make a, a 10 to 15 yard throw that they have a quarterback on their team that, that I think can do it. And, and I've seen enough quarterbacks in high school that can do it. You're asking him to throw the snag or the stick, or even if you were to go with a vertical pop, you're asking him to throw a 15 to 18 yard ball off of a read of a second level defender when he already meshes and does triple option to begin with. So RPO stuff should build right into shotgun option football, in my opinion. Okay. Now, can you get all that done successfully? I don't know. If you have to eliminate some of the other things that you carry, I think if you were to work on it and start with it in spring football and package it down to where, hey, these are the things we do, these are the things we really like, I think you can incorporate all those things because you're already playing option football. Your quarterback's already meshing with the tailback. You already have to do mesh periods with the tailback, and you have to do read periods with your quarterback. So take the read off the five technique and put it on the apex defender, and now see if your quarterback can make that simple read with a simple throw behind it. Okay, now I think you've got triple option football, you've got three back football, two back football, all right, and now you've got a simplistic passing game based off of, all right, original air raid theories that I think to me when you combine all those things together, I think can make for a very potent offensive attack and I think you can, you know, really, uh, really even the game out if you're playing some teams with better talent because you're blocking less players and you're reading players. And in high school, I think that's a thing you got to look at. A lot of times it's a game of Jims and Joes. If you can't block their players, you're never going to move the ball. So what you better find a way to do is block less of them and maybe read one and hope that off of those reads you have enough talent to get the ball to the perimeter or you know, to, to throw the ball to the perimeter to take advantage of where you are not as good as the other team. And in high school football, you better work on that, to, in my opinion, 20 years experience, you better work on that a bunch because there's going to be games where you just flat out are not as good as the other team. College football is a little bit, the window or the gap is closing between teams a little bit. There's still a great disparity from the top level teams to the bottom level teams, but the middle of the pack, that window is closing. You know, it's never going to close like the NFL, but it's closing a little bit with the amount of good players that there are now and, and schools doing a better job in recruiting across the country. The window is closing a little bit, but it's not closing a lot. That window in high school is never going to close. There are going to be certain programs that are always up here, certain programs that are always down there. The idea is how do you go? How do you take a job at a program that's down here or middle, and how do you compete with the schools up here? Okay. And again, that as a lifelong high school football coach, outside of two years as a graduate assistant in college, all right, that is my goal. My goal is to is to find a place where I take the talent that I have and I maximize that talent, and I can compete or beat some teams that are a little bit better than me because of the theories or the schematics that I am using. Still going to come down to blocking and tackling. Every blog we talk about it. All right. I've mentioned it several times before. The whiteboard is great. Markers are great. I love doing all these videos, but at the end of the day, again, I finished four and five this year, third year or fourth straight year without making the playoffs. So at the end of the day, these videos are great, but if you can't teach the schematics of the plays, all right, and you can't teach kids how to block, how to mesh, how to read, you can't teach kids how to tackle or how to defeat blocks, you're never going to win football games. So at the end of the day, I will never argue that it still goes back to fundamental techniques of playing football. But I will argue with you that in high school football, the talent level is going to be so disparaging that you better find ways within your schematics outside of just blocking and tackling. You better find ways within your schematics to even that playing field. So as a high school coach, that's what I'm always trying to do. Every year I try to get better. Every year I try to, uh, you know, find ways that I can compete with teams that are better than me. Right now, we are probably the third or fourth best team in our district talent-wise. So if I'm the third or fourth best team in my district talent-wise, how am I going to compete with one and two or possibly three? That's the goal. All right, I got to find ways to compete with one or two. All right, if I want to make it to the playoffs, so that's always going to be a goal for us. So for me, moving forward, I think incorporating possibly some triple option, like New Mexico is doing, out of the shotgun with some quick game, with some RPOs and some simplistic five-step passing game. I think that's a great way to build uh, a football team around. Uh, a group that may be talented enough to win games, but they're not talented enough to walk into your stadium and show up and go, hey, here's what we do, stop it. All right? If you have the talent to do that, then play the type of game that is, that is sufficient and efficient to you winning games. If your kids are better than their kids, line up, here's what we run, do it well, make, you know, limit your mistakes. It's kind of like you know, the, uh, a version of Alabama playing football right now. If Alabama is that much better than everybody else, except for maybe four or five teams in the country, Line up and do what you do and make the other team beat you. 
All right. They did it against LSU in a 10 nothing game. This is what we do. You're good enough to stop it for long enough, but you can't stop it all night. They win a game 10 nothing. They come back and win a game 51 to 3. Okay. You know, it, are some of those schools that they're beating 51 to 3 in the SEC have those coaches forgot football? No. Have those coaches, you know, have no idea how to defend things? No. I think Dan Mullen said it best yesterday. There's more five stars on Alabama's punt block team than our